Hello, hello, everybody. And welcome, welcome, welcome to another Capital Gains Tax Solutions Mastermind, where every Friday we're diving in to helping you create and preserve more wealth using the Deferred Sales Trust, talking about deal stories and uh, brainstorming ways to make this an investment, not an expense, and ways to understand the legality behind the Deferred Sales Trust, and any other just kind of commonly asked questions that come up or sharing our journey, because every single week we're learning more and more as we close more deals, as we uh, discover more challenges with exit plans, and we're here to share our secrets with you so you can create and preserve more wealth and perhaps use the Deferred Sales Trust for your next exit. For those who don't know me, my name is Brett Swartz, and I'm founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. And, and again, we're always trying to plan and help you uh, make simple exit planning. And today's uh, kind of theme for the day is the number one capital gains tax exit plan secret to design the life that you want. And I think it's great timing because we're heading towards you know, the fall, which then goes into uh, closer to the new year here. We're in the new month of November. It's the month of Thanksgiving. It's the month to um, also start to reflect and to be grateful for everything we have. Um, and also really find out if we're living the life that we've designed. And we're going to weave in how the Deferred Sales Trust can help you unlock some more of those freedoms. And so let's start with this. Um, one thing that we found when we're working with individuals has to do with not only the exit plan strategy, but also working some sort of the, the the weaving the goals and the vision into the life plan. Um, it's interesting, you know, a lot of the business professionals we work with, they, they've built a business, 10, 20, 30, $50 million worth of business, and they're in the process of transitioning. And so part of what we do is say, not only is a transition of your wealth and the transition of the, the capital, but it's also the transition of your life now, right? And so how do we weave in a a wealth plan along with the dst that also aligns with your life plan and so with that i think it's important to always understand and be reminded of what is our purpose what is our purpose what are our priorities and what are our values right and so starting with this in mind uh, you can help to design the life that you want. And, you know, the purpose would be the, you know, the reason for something, something to create, something to do, you know, why were you created? Why do you exist? What are some of the things that you want to make a difference in this life um, with the impact that, uh, and the time that you have to make impact for others, for your family, for the wealth that, that you've built. Um, on top of that, you want to make sure that you have the priorities in order. Some reasons sellers are selling have to do with, time have to do with, uh, you know, bucket list things have to do with giving or making a bigger impact in a different area, maybe starting a new business venture, right? In other words, have that clear vision for the life that you want to design. And that starts with purpose. It starts with priorities. And then it also has to do with values. What are the values that are going to help drive and push you forward? You know, I heard a saying today from a, from a coach that the why is the power that's going to get me through the tough times. The why is the power that's going to get me through the tough time. So what are those challenging things that that uh, are, are are happening and how can you be reminded of the why for your with your purpose and your values and your priorities to help you propel through those tough times? I think another way to think about it too is the why is also going to help you to not stagnate even when you're successful, right? Um, successful in the business, successful in the investments, successful in life. That why, if you're reminded of that, is going to propel you to move forward and not just stagnate once you meet you know, meet that uh, you know that goal. And so, why is the power going to get me through the tough times? And so, how does this all coordinate to the deferred sales trust? Well, glad you asked. There's really ten freedoms that we like to unlock with the deferred sales trust that helps you to design more of the life that you want, helps to maybe speed up towards those goals of impact, of, of family, of time time to travel, of time to start that new business venture, time to end that partnership, time to start that new partnership, time to start that new you know, real estate development, uh, you know, we're looking at a lot of single family luxury home developments now here in Florida with some amazing opportunities to, to build with some new partners of ours. And so all of these things have to do uh, with the ability to access capital and to deploy capital into investments, which otherwise can create cash flow and more wealth. And that's where the Deferred Sales Trust comes in. And this is kind of the best kept secret in the sense that you can design through these 10 freedoms 
using the deferred sales trust because it can give you that flexibility, that diversification, um, and what we call optimal timing. Those are kind of some of the three kind of foundational steps here and that you can sell high, you can be out of debt. So you have the debt freedom and then you can sell high and you can be diversified. So you have diversification freedom and go to multiple asset types. You can sell high and you can have liquidity, right? Meaning that you can deploy capital when deals are coming up. I heard of a deal today that the gentleman built it for $18.5 million and it's a brand new 90 plus units on the West Coast. And now the uh, client of mine is potentially negotiating a $12.5 million short sale with the current owner in the bank. And so we're seeing these opportunities that are coming up and the ability to have the capital to execute is gonna make all the difference for this particular client. And that's what the freedom the Deferred Sales Trust allows you to do to take advantage of opportunities. It's also location freedom, right? A lot of people are moving these days out of New York, out of California, out of these maybe higher tax states with more regulation, looking for a little bit more, um, let's just say freedom is a good way to think about it. And opportunity where business are growing, going to places like Texas and Florida and the Carolinas and Tennessee. So have the ability to have location freedom where you can sell that business, sell that real estate, sell that highly appreciated primary home, and then have the deferred sales trust create that cash flow, which gives you time. Right. And so the deferred sales trust helps you to design the life you want by unlocking these types of freedoms. Another freedom is also maybe the, the charitable giving freedom, the ability to give to charity uh, without having been forced to give to charity and to be able to diversify how that's given and when that's given. The deferred sales trust can be alongside of your charitable giving planning, which is great, which also leads into estate tax planning. We can eliminate the estate tax, which is huge. Above and beyond just you know how you pass it to kids, estate tax has to, in other way, another way to think about this is debt tax, right? You wanna look at your overall net worth and to determine how much is inside my taxable estate and how would the DST help me to design the life that I want by removing those assets outside of my taxable estate? In other words, helping to unlock about another 40% of impact, right? And so if you're, if you're looking to design a life where your legacy of your wealth is making an impact, well, a good way to do that is to, let's say, have a 40% more impact above and beyond the exclusion amounts, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Well, guess what? The Deferred Sales Trust can help you to do that. That's a huge amount of your net worth. And if you have a solution that doesn't require life insurance, doesn't require uh, charity, and doesn't force you to uh, have a bunch of kids to try to gift it away quickly, guess what? Hopefully you're designing more of the life that you want. And so that is the, uh, the secret for today that we wanna share with you is that you can use the DSC to design the life that you want. And I wanna uh, finish kind of this intro here with a story. And the story is with Warren and Catherine, and they were uh, looking to sell their highly appreciated primary, oh, I'm sorry, uh, multifamily property in Sacramento. And for them, uh, they wanted to have a opportunity to spend more time with their family, uh, with their daughters, um, they're in fact, they're, they're, they're twin daughters, and they were looking at a lot of time and energy being taken from uh, from the property, from their time, um, taken from their kids, right? And so they're going, how do we design the life that we want? Well, they had $190,000 is their goal um, to help give you more cash flow, but the current property is producing about one hundred twenty. dollars And so they said, if the DST can produce an extra about 60% of cash flow and free up all of our time and energy, that helps to design the life that we want, which ultimately helps to make a bigger impact with their kids, why their kids, both their daughters are about 10 years old now, and hopefully leave a lasting legacy. In fact, I'll be speaking this upcoming week at the DLP conference in Ponte Vista Beach, Florida, and people like Tim Tebow, people like Lloyd Reeb, uh, people like Trav Bell with the bucket list, amazing opportunity. And I'll be sharing this. And so I just want to just kind of give you a little bit of an intro to my talk that I'll be giving. And ultimately, I want to encourage you to be thinking about ways that you can have reminder of your purpose, the priorities, your values, and how what you're about to do with your exit plan can be aligned by looking at the DST to unlock the life that you want, make a huge impact and leave a lasting legacy. That being said, I am joined by some amazing uh, strategic alliances, people that are dear friends of mine and are believers in the DST to help our clients create and preserve more wealth. I will start with the Jake Carpenter today. Mr. Jake Carpenter out of Washington. He's a wealth advisor. He's also an expert when it comes to real estate investing passively. Jake Carpenter, how are we doing, brother? 
Great. It's great to be here. Um, I'm excited for our discussion today. As always, there are some amazing things that uh, using the Deferred Sales Trust can do when it comes to your overall planning. And of course, it may not be the be-all, end-all of your, of your plan, but it's certainly what uh, Jake Miller would call a keystone that you can work around with your financial planning, your estate planning, business succession, wealth transfer, unlocking the liquidity that you need to do the things that you want when you want to do them. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. And so, and with that being said, um, Jake, anything about designing your life with the DST or weaving, you know, helping, helping the DST to help you unlock what you want the design to be, talk about the deal with, with Gary, right? Gary, who sold his mobile home parks. What was what he was looking, what was he looking to design for his life and how did the DST unlock what he really wanted? Well, first thing, it's important to understand that the Deferred Sales Trust is not a strategy that's going to necessarily corner you in any one type of area, like I have to be active or I have to be passive. And what the situation with Gary is he determined that, you know, he'd kind of like to hit pause for about five to seven years. Uh, he had some uh, five mobile home parks that had appreciated and he got offers that he just couldn't refuse. And he he decided that you know I'd like to I'd like to be able to reap the benefits of the capital appreciation on these assets, and I'd like to just hit pause for five to seven years and be very very passive and just receive income off of these off the capital appreciation without having to pay the capital gains tax, and then revisit what my life is going to look like in five to seven years and possibly become active after that. Um, depending on what life looks like. And so the beauty of the Deferred Sales Trust is you can design it to be flexible so that you can be active for a while, then you can be passive, and then you can go back to being active. Uh, for example, we've got a lot of younger uh, couples that are very, very successful. They have kids in high school. They would like to be a little bit more passive until they graduate and go to college and then uh, move back into more of an active role uh, and out of the passive into the active role. And the Deferred Sales Trust gives you the ability to do that because there's no timing like a 1031 exchange, 4,580 day window. You don't have to go back into a specific kind of an asset like like kind property. You can invest in just about anything you want, when you want, how you want. And uh, you know, if you want to be active, you can partner up with your trust through an LLC. The trust can be the limited partner. You can be the general partner and you can be very, very active or you can take the trust proceeds and invest them passively and just generate income. So either or. Amazing. Yeah. You know, it really feels like the number one, if you would say people have regrets that are that are clients of ours, Jake, um, is that their kids grew up so fast, right? And it's a reminder of the priorities and the purpose and the values that, um, you know, we've all got to be, you know, looking at, right? And if it's family and it's it's spending time with them and it's saying, hey, how do I design my financial life, my business life, my exit plan so that I, I have the ability to be more present, have more time and more focus because guess what? They grew up so fast and then they're off and going and you're exactly right for Gary. I love what you're saying here. And I'm not even sure that this uh, for his kids or his situation on that, but just in general, the DST gives you the ability to be passive or active and to design that period of time, the optimal timing for, for your life plan while you have these certain windows that never return, right? I mean, your kids are only so, uh, they're only, you know, below, you know, 10 years old for so long, 10 years, you know, they're only below 15 for so long. And then they're off to, you know, let's say 18 and they're, they're off, right? Some people say it's when they hit 16, they got that car and all of a sudden I don't even see them anymore, right? And so the ability to have that flexibility to design the life that you want, being passive or active, and not having to feel like you have to give up your dreams, right? Your dreams of being a business entrepreneur or real estate owner or, or whatever it is that you're pursuing, that you can hit the pause, hit pause, take a break, and then redeploy when it makes sense. I'm going to pass it to uh, to Jake Miller to see what his thoughts are on that. Jake Miller is a certified financial planner. 
one of our top strategic alliances across the country. Jake, any thoughts on any of what we just said? You know, we're here talking about life goals. We're talking about things that are important. And then as a small little tiny piece of that, we're talking about our money. Um, we're putting things into priority, but at the same time, at in the same extent, even though the money is not perhaps the most ultimate, most important thing, because again, we're talking about family, we're talking about time, we're talking about freedom. The money side of things can empower us to do better at those three. And when we are more efficient with our money, meaning that we're profit sharing less with the government, uh, less than we have to, less than we're required to, less than we're obligated to, because we know and understand and trust strategies such as the deferred sales trust, we are liberated and empowered to do more with our life. And I think that's the overall message that we're conveying today. And I yeah. appreciate appreciate the uh, the moral that's going out that we're sharing. Absolutely. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the month of Thanksgiving. It's a month also to start reflecting and then to start to planning for next year to design the life that you want, make an impact. And so we've talked about that, how the DST can be, you can be passive or active. You can be diversified. You can also be out of that debt, that debt that's causing a lot of pain right now for a lot of people because, you know, debt has increased, obviously, uh, drastically in costs and interest rates. And it's tough, and people are um, hitting some some uh, some panic buttons because their debt is resetting. Uh, it's not it, the cap rates are expiring, and all of a sudden, their multifamily properties could operationally be doing fine. Although there's some insurance challenges that are definitely hitting a lot of uh, the folks we're working with. Their occupancies are great, operations are doing great, uh, rents are either even or up or a little bit. But guess what? Their interest rate has jumped so high so fast that they're starting to go underwater. And now, guess what? They're hoping and wishing they can sell, but they're feeling trapped by that capital gains tax. They definitely don't want a 1031 exchange. And so guess what? The Deferred Sales Trust is a perfect solution, we believe. It's set exactly right now for this time and place to be able to help you exit those assets, pay off that debt. We call it the Dave Ramsey Debt-Free Plan for your highly appreciated multi-million dollar asset without having to do a 1031 exchange and take on equal or greater debt, which is the definition of a 1031 and equal or greater value. So Jake Carpenter, talk about the ability to be debt-free right now, have peace of mind, have that liquidity to wait to pounce onto opportunities. What could that do to help, you know, let's say even yourself or your clients to, to design the life that they want? You know, it's interesting because, you know, when you're talking about real estate, you can do something called a 1031 exchange. And it's interesting that that's been so popular and everyone's heard of it, but you have to, in essence, sell high and buy high. And then if you're not talking about real estate, most people don't even know that they have a capital gains deferral strategy or a capital gains deferral strategy that can defer the taxes on the sale of a business stock or any highly appreciated asset. But you know, the interesting thing about that is we can create liquidity that we can park and, and utilize to take advantage of ideal timing in the markets. And that's, that is so important uh, to be able to take advantage of being able to move on a project or an opportunity at the right time uh, because you have the liquidity available. So this, in essence, allows an individual to sell an illiquid asset and park however much they want in dry powder on the sidelines and wait for that opportunity to come along. And, um, you know, the, the cool thing about the Deferred Sales Trust is that with the strategy comes the team. And the team, guys like Jake Miller uh, and, and others of us, we work together to help you find those opportunities sometimes that are um, places that you can park or deploy that dry powder. Absolutely. And I'm going to share my screen here too, to give you guys an opportunity to check out. And again, this is kind of a sneak peek because you guys are all here. Um, and this will show, um, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, here it is. So this is the, uh, this is the presentation I'll be giving. There's a lot of slides here, but I just want to fast forward to uh, a slide that has the 1031 exchange and some of the, just the most challenging parts about it, right? I mean, we call it the hard way. You can do the hard way, 
Um, but we encourage you not to do the hard way, especially right now, unless you can find that deal that makes great sense. And it makes great sense. High five. We were the first one to tell you to do the 1031. But this is what you're hire, it's what you've been forced to do the past 10 years, or even really more than that. But hire a broker, five to six percent commission. You gotta sell the property, another half percent closing costs, hire attorneys to review documents, a thousand, hire a 1031 qualified intermediary. It can be $750 to $1,500. Hire an attorney to draft or a new LLC, $1,500. Identify three properties within 45 days and close within 180 days. We call that the shotgun wedding, right? Which typically doesn't end very well, um, but it could. You have a chance. Apply and obtain a loan, ooh, 1% origination fee. That loan as well, you got to make sure that you can get that debt because lenders are definitely tightening up and the interest rates are very high. Buy the property. Hopefully, you did not overpay. Take on more debt than you wanted to. Most people typically are buying, you know, selling high and buying higher and taking on more debt. Upfront costs are hundreds of thousands of dollars per deal. The time to do all this, by the way, just your life and your stress is maybe six months to sell your property and then buy another property within those 180 days. The time for post-close is higher new management, new leases, new utilities, new laws, new collections, new evictions. It's really endless. And the question becomes for what, right? Most of our clients are somewhere between five and $50 million. They have built their wealth and they're in the process of designing the life that they want, not being forced to do it the hard way, which is the 1031 exchange. And by the way, you also might be curious, well, Brett, you're talking about this DST. Maybe I'm thinking about the Delaware Statutory Trust. I've heard of DSTs. Well, let me tell you, the Deferred Sales Trust is very different than the Delaware Statutory Trust. And we call that the inflexible passive way and what you've also been forced to do. Um, one of the biggest challenges with the Delaware Statutory Trust is, number one, first of all, it's just a 1031 exchange. It's, we also like to call it a Delaware 1031. It's in the 1031 family, whereas the Deferred Sales Trust is not in the 1031 family. But what are the challenges? First of all, the funds are not liquid. They're tied up for seven to 10 years. It could be five, but most of the time it's around seven to 10. These are not diversified assets. I mean, they could be a multifamily property or a couple of different ones or a couple of industrial properties, but it's just one asset class. It's not diversified. You probably paid too much for it because it's in the same market that you bought it in that you sold. Fees are as high as 14% to multiple parties. Just so you know, if you put a dollar in, you might pay, you know, 14 cents of every dollar goes to these, you know, people in between. Nothing wrong with that. If the deal makes sense, you got to know what you net. But a lot of these deals are right around 5%. They're not necessarily amazing. Old depreciation schedule. Um, again, we already talked about the 1031 sell high, buy high. But the biggest one, I want you to look up the seven deadly sins of a Delaware statutory trust. And one of the biggest ones that we really think is kind of the, the, the toughest one to, to, to really um, make sense of um, is not being able to have a value add. These deals are typically beautiful deals, great tenants, turnkey, great properties, very expensive, a lot of, a lot of expenses there but they're not value add, meaning you're buying and you're improving the property drastically. And that's where we found that a lot of our clients are making their wealth is to that value add um, uh, properties. Now there are some positives to the Delaware. I don't want to think everything is negative there. They're non-recourse loans. They're again, they're turnkey, beautiful properties and they're first class operators. Also, you don't have any of those toilet trash and liabilities that you have to do anymore. There's no more new management, no more new leases, no more new utilities that you have to deal with, new laws, new collections, new evictions. We call it peaceful mailbox money or sleepy real estate capital. And that's amazing, right? If you can, if you can have that, that's great. But you also want to have to have the time to invest into other deals. And that's where the deferred sales stress, we think, is more of like the Netflix to the blockbuster exit planning Delaware. One other positives, we do do Delaware statutory trust. In fact, we do them all the time. And so whether you're doing a 1031 exchange or deferred sales trust or Delaware statutory trust, please uh, make sure you hear what I'm saying. Come to us because we will help you with this. And here's the key. Sometimes there's a debt over basis issue. And so Jake and Jake and I have all worked on multiple transactions where we're doing a partial Delaware statutory trust and a partial deferred sales trust. And this is a common way to replace the debt over basis, which is not deferrable using a deferred sales trust, just the debt over that basis. And so let's say, for example, you're selling a $5 million asset and you've got $2 million of debt and your basis is zero, all right? Well, we've got to replace that $2 million of debt. And the way we do that in a 1031, is we sent all of the funds to the qualified intermediary at closing. And then we put a down payment somewhere around 20 to 25% of that 2 million. And that replaces that debt in a Delaware statutory trust deal. So the debt's out of our name. We are now able to put the remaining into the deferred sales trust. 
And we've accomplished the goal using both strategies, which goes back to Jake's Carpenter's uh, thought about team. It's all about the team to execute these strategies. Most 1031 brokers or 1031 companies, they do not know the deferred sales trust. And that's how we separate ourselves to help you execute this as I'm a broker. And then Jake Carpenter and Jake, and Jake Miller can do uh, their securities professional so they can do Delaware statutory trust. And that being said, I'm going to pass it back to uh, Jake Carpenter. Jake, any thoughts on any anything I just said there? No, I mean, that, that was great. It's it's uh, a lot of times it's a multi-step process. And the, the takeaway here is really if you're in a 1031 or thinking about going into a 1031, even if it, the, the deferred sales trust is not a consideration, you still would like, it's probably a good idea to come to us because you want it to you want to set your 1031 up correctly so that if you get into a situation where there's uh, it's getting really close and 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 we need to kind of maybe give you an exit strategy from the 1031 we can pull the ripcord and uh, potentially still defer the capital gains tax into the deferred sales trust or do a partial 1031 exchange and then do the deferred sales trust, but at least it would be an option for you instead of just having to pay the capital gains tax. Absolutely. And it's not a one size fits all. Sometimes it takes multiple strategies. Sometimes it's a hammer. Sometimes it's a it's a screwdriver. Sometimes it's a it's a, uh, a you know a bobcat truck to to a bobcat tractor to help you with whatever you're doing. And by the way, that's why we do offer what's called the best 1031 exit plan. In fact, we encourage you to go to experttaxsecrets.com to learn all about our coaching program. If you are a broker, we believe it's malpractice to send anyone to a qualified intermediary that doesn't offer the deferred sales trust because that's that parachute or that rescue in case the 1031 doesn't work out. What are some reasons the 1031 might not work out? Well. The seller may not deal knowing that you're in a 1031, meaning he's not willing to negotiate on anything that you find during due diligence. Let's see the the uh, the actual um, you know appraisal may not appraise, right? The lender may not lend. Uh, you know the economy could shift, and so now all of a sudden you're stuck, and you're saying, "Well, I wish I would have had the best 1031 exit plan with Brett Swartz and Capital Gains Tax Solutions and the team to make sure I could exit and fail and or rescue into a deferred sales trust." Guess what? We get calls every single week of people who want to use our services, but they're in what's called 1031 jail. What's 1031 jail? Well, that's when you're with a qualified intermediary who will not cooperate with us or the deferred sales trust for whatever reasons that they have. And so please do yourself a favor. If you're working with a broker, make sure they connect with us to make sure that you are with our best 1031 exit plan because you give all the options, a 1031, you get a deferred sales trust, and you get that Delaware statutory trust all encapsulated so that you have all the options. Um, you just go to experttaxsecrets.com to learn more about that. Okay. So now we're going to open up for questions. Um, we've been talking a lot here. I'm going to say hello to AC Claire. We got Jay Wilds. We got Sylvia. We've got um, just a few here. Anyone have any questions? You can put those in the comments. You can also unmute and say hello. It could be a comment. It could be a question. It could be a, a live deal. Uh, we are happy to answer that for you now. I feel like fall's officially here, by the way. The weather's really dropped. It's kind of nice in some ways, although I've heard it's getting cold some places. Florida, we're like perfect weather, but other places are like freezing. Jake, is it, is it freezing up there in Washington? It is at freezing, my friend. Fall is here. <laughs> <laughs> or winter is early, right? Yeah, up here, winter can come and go, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Welcome, Michael. Um, just joined us here. Uh, we were just opening up for questions. And so if you have a live deal, you can unmute yourself and say hello and where you're from, or you can just type that in the chat. But we're just talking about how the Deferred Sales Trust can help you to design the life that you want by giving flexibility and freedom to invest the capital, be passive or active. And also about the 1031 uh, best exit plan, so you have a, a rescue plan in case your 1031 fails. Uh, you go to capitalgainstaxation.com to learn more about that. Also, too, while I'm here, we have the brand new book, hit Amazon recently. It's called the best. It's called building a capital gains tax exit plan. And it hit number one bestseller. So you can check that out on Amazon. Pretty cool. We're really excited about that. 
Um, it hit number one bestseller and it has people like Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, Jake Miller's in the book. And then I, of course, have a few chapters as well. Check that out. Building a capital gains tax exit plan. Um, yeah. All right. Well, if no one has any questions, Jake, you can toss something up here and then we can, um, unless Michael B does, Michael, how are you doing today? Do you have a question or a thought there, sir? Just arrived. Sorry. That's okay. I listened to you last week. It was good. So I'm sure it's a lot of it was repetition. Okay, good. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, good to see you again. I do remember now. Um, good. Jake Carpenter, any thoughts or questions? Do you want to talk about Jake Carpenter a little bit about, um, you know, how it passes to kids and heirs? And I think that's a common question to like, what happens? How long does this go for? And what's some proper estate planning? Jake, why don't we, why don't we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that's a good point is you have to understand that when you use the deferred sales trust that you're no longer going to qualify if you're in a real estate position you're no longer going to qualify for the step up in basis so it's important to understand that when that time comes and you pass away how that's potentially passed on to heirs and in fact uh, i have unfortunately a situation right now where we're preparing uh we got a, a client, a participant in the Deferred Sales Trust that's uh, uh, probably going to pass away from cancer pretty soon. And we're going through this process right now. And it's important to make sure you've got some estate planning. So you want to have your estate planning attorney involved with setting up something like a living trust where the promissory note for your Deferred Sales Trust is in that is in that living trust. When you pass away, then uh, that can pass through the trust to the kids and they can step up into your shoes and continue uh, using the deferred sales trust in the same way that you were when you were alive. Absolutely. And so how would you go about doing that? Well, step number one, um, you would call it's called funding your living trust, funding your living trust. And by the way, when you set up a living trust, it doesn't automatically have all of your assets funded, like your primary home or your businesses or your real estate or your stocks. You need to go in and essentially add those and or retitle the assets in, as or the beneficiary of those assets to that living trust. And so if it was Jake Carpenter's living trust, it'd be, let's say, the Carpenter family, you know, living trust 2021, whatever, whatever, whatever year it was created, how it was created. He's going to go in and, you know, to his stock portfolio and add that beneficiary. He's going to go to the title for his his primary home and, and change that title or re, re, retitle it. All of those things work with your local professionals to make sure you're doing that in the proper order. But the same is true for the for the promissory note. The promissory note is the asset. And so what you're going to want to do is take the promissory note to your living trust attorney and say, I want to make sure it's funded correctly. And or we're going to actually make out the promissory note to the living trust inside of the actual promissory note. So these are some of the things that you want to be prepared for. So you're not caught off guard, which means what? Although you don't get the step to basis upon your passing, your children can step into your shoes. So let's say you have two kids and let's say the deferred sales trust was paying you $20,000 a month. And inside of the living trust, you say, you know what? I just want to split the, split the cash flow for my kids. So when I die, when my wife dies, after we both die, let's just say, I just wanted to go 50, 50. They step into your shoes. And instead of the 20,000 going to, let's say you and your spouse, now it splits between, let's say you've had two kids, 10,000, 10,000. They do pay tax, but they they pay tax as if you were paying tax, but although it's based upon their actual income, their state that they live in. So there could be some slight adjustments there. But what we're saying is you can keep this trust going on for as long as they want to, right? And they can pass it to their kids. And so this can be a generational way to build uh, or to create and preserve cash flow. And that's the unique part about the deferred sales trust. Hopefully it'll help you design the life that you want and make the impact that you want to make. Jake Carpenter, add anything to that? Yeah, you know, you, you have to understand that a lot of folks say, well, why why would I destroy the step up in basis to go into the deferred sales trust? And so generally, for the most part, we structure the deferred sales trust is structured on a 10 year note. And at the end of that 10 year period, what most of our, our clients will do is just restructure and uh, restructure the note for another 10 years, restructure it again for another 10 years and continue to do that to to continue deferral so you can do that until death and then the kids as they step into your shoes can do the same thing 
Yes, exactly. And by the way, if you do feel you have health concerns and health challenges that are imminent, right, or are close to it, we we do, and you're not necessarily in an urgent need to sell, we encourage you to just not use the deferred sales trust, not sell, and then receive that step up in basis. It's less expensive, it's less complicated, and your capital gains tax solution has solved itself by default. We can't assume, however, that the stepped up basis is going to be around forever. And number two, we also would encourage you to design the life that you want today rather than holding on for something later just for the tax reasons. And so if there's not like an eminent health concern. Guess what? The deferred sales trust is probably going to give you the freedoms that you want. The location freedom, time freedom, cash flow, probably increase your cash flow, uh, debt freedom, Right. Um, and, and and let me give you this other one. Sometimes we think the stepped up basis is the end all be all. But guess what? It doesn't solve for the debt tax. Uh, in fact, a lot of people get confused thinking the stepped up basis means, oh, my heirs have no tax when I die. It's true for up to your exemption amounts, which in 2026, we think are going to drop to about 10 million married couple, 5 million single. And so let's say you had a $110 million estate. And you thought, oh, it's all in real estate. My business is in my stocks. I could just die. Stepped up basis. Kids can walk away tax-free. Capital gains tax-free, yes. However, estate tax-free, no. Uh, in fact, they would assess that $110 million um, evaluation of your estate. And they, let's say it's 2026. And let's say the exemption is a $10 million for a married couple. And they would say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, the no, or, or talking to the kids, you know, kids of Mr. and Mrs. Jones, the estate is valued at $110 million at the time of death. Yes, you got a stepped up basis for capital gains tax. The exemption at the time of death for 2026 was $10 million. Therefore, $100 million is inside of the taxable estate that's subject to estate death tax. We would like 40% of that here in the next six months. Thank you. And so this begins the scramble for the funds, the scramble of refinancing or selling, or, you know, you find out about these estate sales, right? And they're liquidating and they're selling. And all of a sudden it's a, it's a complete mess. And 40% of the total legacy, if you will, uh, a little less than that because they got the 10 million exemption is now going to the government. When, what could you have done? A, you could have known the rules, meaning it's not a stepped up basis to solve that. But B, you could have sold that $110 million before you died. Let's say it was one business to keep it simple. And you move it into what's called a DST plus. Well, by doing that before you die, we've removed it outside of the taxable estate. And so upon death, the $110 million promissory note uh, that was owed to you cancels and essentially the remainder, your children are the beneficiaries of this trust, but it's outside the taxable estate. So there's nothing to assess, which means we've eliminated that 40% debt tax on a hundred million, which is $40 million. Guess what? Hopefully that helps you design the life that you want, impact that you want, leave a lasting legacy. Jake Carpenter, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a really, really powerful uh, element to the Deferred Sales Trust 2.0 that a lot of the folks that come to us, even in our initial meetings, Brett, I remember the last one that we just opened up, they came to us with a $60 million sale and they knew they had a, a capital gains issue, but what they did not know, even though they had, what, five or six advisors on the call with us, is that no one had talked to them about the federal estate tax issue. And so this is really important because if you don't use something like the Deferred Sales Trust 2.0 to remove some of the estate out of the taxable estate, you've got complicated gifting that you have to use over time. You've got to buy lots of life insurance. You've got you know, to string several strategies together to try to gift and move things outside the estate when on the cusp of a very large capital sale, you can remove that from the taxable estate. And in, in many cases, it can work with your estate plan to get you below the exemption amounts so that you won't have to deal with that capital gain or that uh, federal estate tax and capital gain tax issue. Yeah, what a way to leave a lasting legacy. I don't know a better way with your wealth than being great stewards with it by exiting into the DST plus 
eliminating that that 40 percent debt tax and the amount of good that that can do for your family and to the causes you believe in is is exponential right for generations to come and that's what we want to be able to provide clarity on help you understand how it works and the track record going back over 27 years now thousands of closes billions and billions and billions of, of assets exited into the dst and the dst plus and we want the opportunity to show you that help you guide you and earn your trust earn your business you can go to capitalgainstaxrich.com um that being said uh jake i'm feeling pretty good i don't know if anyone has any questions at this point but if not perhaps we can wrap it up and have everyone have a great a great great friday yeah so uh if you want more information um you can contact me at uh, www.carpentercapitalllc.com or you can reach us at 509-396-5292 uh and again you know the deferred sales trust whether it be 1.0 or 2.0 neither of those are the be all end all if if you've got if your health is bad you know maybe it might make more sense not to use the deferred sales trust but brett and i and our team are not here to try to push or sell you on a strategy we're here to help customize a plan that works for your individual situation that works seamlessly to create efficiency and coordination across your retirement plan your estate plan business succession plan and and puts you in that life that you want to live in the way you want to live it, not just try to sell a strategy to you. Absolutely. So, and if, yep, that's great, Jake. And if you want to learn about, uh, connect with me, go to capitalgainstaxsolution.com. Mentioned you saw us on this, uh, on this live stream here. Um, that being said, we're here every single Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, 1 p.m. Eastern. You can ask questions. I do see, uh, Mr. I think, uh, Mr. Wilds. You might have a question. If you do, you can go ahead and just unmute yourself yeah, and say hello. If you, hey, how are you doing? Um, if you got a minute, uh, could you explain in a little more detail how the trust removes things from an estate, a taxable estate? Yes, sir. Yeah, without going into like the proprietary nature of what we're what we're doing, Mr. Wilds. And Mr. Wilds, <laughs> what, where are you from, and what's your profession? And is it something for yourself or for a client of yours? Um, I'm in South Carolina. And I'm a, a wealth advisor, a manager, yeah. and yeah. Um, it's for a client of mine. Okay, excellent. That's great. And have you, um, you probably use some similar strategies. And so I'll say a few things that might pique a little bit of what you already might be doing here. Um, but, it, you know, essentially we're changing the nature of ownership to lendership. OK, mm -hmm. and and we're so we're changing the nature. A lot of people think that, oh, I'm gifting it to the trust or I'm, I'm contributing to my trust. Right. And, right. And, and, and and so their first thought is, is it's something that they own and they're in there and they're gifting or giving. Right. And right. so with the deferred sales trust, you're actually becoming a lender. You're lending right. it. And so it's changing. The, yeah. So it's truly an exit plan. And the DST plus is not 453 installment sale, which is where our first mind goes. You go, well, how are you doing this if it's just 453 installment sale? Well, that's a DST 1.0 that does not remove it outside the taxable estate. And we're very clear what we're, what we're talking about here is there's two, two DSTs, 1.0 and 2.0. And 1.0 is just a traditional installment sale, which your kids can step into your shoes. And 2.0 is a different tax code. And that tax code, the way that it's structured, basically there's a note. And it's it's like it, it form it pays back like an annuity based upon a life expectancy and the IRS actu actuation tables. Basically, say like your clients are both sixty five years old, they're going to give a life expectancy to that. Let's say eighty eighty three, and it's going to be an annuity payment back to that client over their lifetime. But upon their death, that note cancels, and their and their children were the beneficiaries of this trust. And and by nature, when we when they had sold and done the transaction it's outside the taxable estate. What I can tell you is there's obviously more to that with NDAs and with engagement agreements on actual deals that we can share on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, but I will tell you that this has been audited 
Uh, one of the biggest deals ever done was a 120 plus million dollar deal in California. And it's been, a, it was a no change, no finding audit. And so it, it, it works uh, and it has worked for many, many, many years. And so uh, without again giving into the proprietary nature of it, that is the uh, the best best way I can explain it. Okay, Mr. And what's your first name, sir? Jeff. 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 J E F F. Oh, Jeff. Okay, Jeff. Good to meet you. Yep. Go ahead. So Next sounds, question. So it sounds like you have, in in essence, kind of turned it into a pay like an insurance payment, um, in the sense that insurance payments from the trust outside of the estate aren't taxable to the estate and they aren't taxable as income. It, not necessarily insurance. In fact, we don't have to ever put it in, into any insurance, although people do right. uh, can. I mean, it's similar in, similar in how it's treated. In, in a yeah, like you, again, there's a, every every wealth advisor and CPA and estate planning training that we work with, um, there's some similarities to some things they're already using. Uh -huh. And once they sign the NDAs and go through it with us, they go, oh, wow, you guys saw that nuance. And it's the recipe of putting the things together is what I could say to you, Jeff. Jeff. Uh -huh. uh, so, okay. but uh, but yeah, it's, it, it's like an annuity payment, although it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be invested into annuities or invested into insurance. But the nature of way that we structure it removes it outside the taxable estate. And that's, I think that's the best way to put it. Any other questions for me on anything else? So when it's received by the heirs, um, how is it treated for income tax purposes? So it's a great question. It all depends. Okay. It all depends um, is, is a good answer until we see the individual case and, and everything else. But I can tell you it's a state tax free from the estate. Okay. And it may or may not be capital gains tax free for the kids. OK, yeah. so we, we would want to see that individual case and sit down with you and them. The way we work, by the way, is a conditional basis. We will sit down and we will walk through every step of the way with engagement agreement sign, NDA sign and go through it. And from A to Z, set everything up, weave it into the transaction. And if for any reason between the time that you engage and the time that it closes, that you don't use the trust, you don't owe us anything. You can just say, no, I don't want to use it. Uh, that's how confident we are in what we do once we have a chance to sit down. The timing does need to be before the close of escrow. It also needs to be before the buyer removes all contingencies. And ideally, especially for large transactions, we want to do this well before you've listed the business or, or going under contract. That's ideally what how we would structure it and timing. But it's not necessarily required. As long as there's at least one contingency remaining, we can use these structures. Again, go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to start. Uh, any other questions there, uh, Jeff? Jeff? I, again, I don't know how, how. How do you spell your name? I want to make sure I pronounce this right. There's J E F F. Yeah, just Jeff. Okay, I kept, I kept I was hearing a D in there. Maybe that's that South Carolina accent. I uh, I was up in uh, Savannah just here uh, last okay. weekend, and then we went to Asheville, mm -hmm. went to a few uh, you know apple orchards and got some apple pie, and and so uh, we toured downtown uh, Savannah, Georgia as well, which was cool. But anyway, yeah, so Jeff, cool any other question. questions? Um, that's good for right now. Okay, excellent. Well, I want to thank everyone again for, for attending. Uh, come back next week as well. Again, go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to learn more. And we will talk to everyone again real soon. And hope, hope stay warm if you're in a cold spot. And otherwise, enjoy the, uh, the, 